Welcome to Art and Leisure. My name is Chioma Okwara. Compliments of the season. The Musical Society of Nigeria had a carol service. It was an awesome time. Enjoy it. These are trained voices. The Bisco Society of Nigeria was established 30 years ago to promote the understanding and enjoyment of classical music in the country. Harmonious tunes can only come from instruments whose players spend time to rehearse. At Christmas, both human and animals worship the newborn king. also made room for sing-along. Christmas is a time to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ, whom Christians believe is the Savior of the world. Welcome back. 
Yes, I'm watching Art and Leisure, a program that tells you what artists are doing. You also get to know what people like you and I do at Leisure. Now, let's quickly go over to Alex's gallery in Victoria Island, Lagos, to see an exhibition. George Edoze is one of the contemporary artists who has a well-defined artistic identity. Anyway, see George's work, I'll recognize it. He had his fourth soul exhibition recently and he titled it Afro Love. Now I would say, let's see Judge's Loves. In this exhibition, Judge Edoze's preoccupation is about the human condition, both in abstract terms and in the challenging realities of life in Lagos. Therefore, he titled the exhibition Afro Love. There was actually a lot of thought before I finally decided to title the show Afro Love. Um, first, we have to look at um, a young artist that just graduated from the university that lives in Africa. He's struggling with all manner of things. He's creating works of art in a bizarre environment, um, a based environment, a based society, struggling with uh, social problems, political, economic, religious, and all of that. People look at what you do and they say it's fetish. Some other look at it and say, why should this guy go and spend time in the university studying art and all of that? And um, then you also think of some other factors, you know, comparing the artists that live in Africa with the ones that live in Europe. The ones that live in Europe, yes, they might also have some element, some challenges, but you can't compare with the manner of things that we see here. You know, first of all, you have to be a marketer, you have to be your manager, you have to create the works, you have to do all manner of things yourself. And at the end of the day, he still has so much love for the land. The work is titled uh, The Big City. It's amongst the Eko Sikwalike series. Eko Sikwalike is an Igbo word that means uh, Eko is rough, Lagos is rough. You know, most of the artists live in Lagos. Uh, Lagos is the melting point of art, if not in the whole of Africa. Both the guy that is living in Victoria Island and the guy that is living in uh, maybe somewhere in Ikotwe or, some, uh, or, or thereabout, are all making babies. They are falling in love. They are so excited being human. They are so excited living in Lagos. The difference is that the other guy lives in Victoria Island and the other guy stays somewhere else. And, but all in all, they still run their life and there is a melting point where they meet to do business, sell their art, and still go back to wherever they stay. He also addresses other issues like loneliness, friendship, solidarity, greed, and all that makes us human or inhuman. This particular piece, there are 10 panels of uh, 10 female uh, figures titled The 10 Faces of Onyama. Different phases of, uh, of life as a female artist, falling in love, getting married, broken hearts and all of that. At the end of the day, the, still, the girl still has love for the land. But this piece is titled uh, Wazobia and um, from what you can see, it has uh, three ladies from uh, the three major ethnic groups in Nigeria. There's the Igbo lady, the center, and um, there's an Alsa lady and the Yoruba lady. I like the female figure and I paint it all the time. George Idoze studied fine and applied arts at the University of Benin. He majored in painting, but he's been experimenting with fabric in the last nine years. A certain time, I had to travel to the east, and um, that's where I actually come from. And I picked up one of my mother's uh, rappers. My mom is late, and uh, I wanted to do a painting in her memory and all of that. So when I got back to Lagos, and I cut off some pieces of the wrapper, pasted on canvas, and uh, tried to do a painting. Most of the time, um, you try to do something, and you end up doing some other things. That's how creativity is. And I ended up doing some other things, and I looked at it. It looked nice. He's done fabric painting fabric collage, and for the first time, he presents his fabric sculpture in the round. This particular piece is titled the VIP. The VIP is, from what you can see, is a huge guy, and he's, he's holding a goodie bag, and inside the goodie bag, he has uh, nozzles of fuel, he has meters of fuel, and some other good things he wants to give to the masses. Then there are other smaller figures here that are almost like uh, skeletons and all of that. They're also praising and uh, begging the uh, VIP for whatever he has. I'm looking at the VIP as an African leader, okay? Uh, most of the African leaders, yes. 
and the politicians we find around, they come up with all good stuff. They tell us all kinds, all manner of things when they are about to get into office. But once they get into office, there is this curtain, there is this iron that breaks, that stops us from getting to the people we voted into office. George works in his studio at home. I try as much as possible to hold the kids, to make out time, to be quiet, for him to think of what to paint. And that's all. You have to create a very quiet environment for him to paint. This is his fourth solo outing. He's participated in over 69 group exhibitions within and outside the country. He's curated 13 exhibitions in America, France, United Kingdom, Ghana, and Nigeria. His works are on choice homes. People are fascinated by his new collection. Of course, he has always been more of an, a semi-abstract artist because you can still read meaning, you can still recognize his images, but um, he breaks them down into shapes, which makes, it, um, which makes his work interesting. I particularly like the, the VIP because it takes a lot to actually go into thinking and executing the project itself, you know. You can just do art for Nigerians alone. You should be able to do art that can stand outside the country. So especially the sculpture, the installation is awesome. It can stand anywhere in the world. So that's an impression. I have. It can affect anybody. I was a senior in school, but I mean, you look at some people, you're like, this guy is a big, he's a very strong guy. He's not a kind, he's, not, he's no longer than the senior. You know, I know he's very, very good. I think George Edozier is uh, one of the younger generation artists who is showing fantastic potential. Uh, he continues to reinvent his style that has become very familiar with his uh, technique. And um, he's also branched out and has now included sculpture and installation. The next show is on his mind. I'm looking at pushing my sculptures uh, a lot more uh, uh, further than what we have now. My next show is going to have more fabric sculptures than paintings. In this solo exhibition, George Edozi has touched on different facets of our national life. He encourages everyone to remain resolute. <laughs> Nice to have you back. I hope you enjoyed watching that. George Edoze is a committed artist, and I know he'll be around for a long time. God willing. Now, let's talk about one of the legends of our time. J.B. Clark is a renowned writer and poet. He turned 80 recently, and the drums were rolled out. Different people organized different events to celebrate him. At Didi Museum, he sat for about three hours for a live session. Take a look. There are 15 artists, and each person has a different approach to the subject. This live study exercise is tagged Document Living Icon Project. It began five years ago. What prompted me was I've uh, gone through art history and read a lot of books and seen that uh, great men and great kings either in European or African history. In European history, you could find them in paintings or sculptures. In African history, like the Benin bronze plaques, you could find such uh, individuals or images in the body of works. And I've seen that uh, in contemporary times, uh, except your commission to do a portrait, or you just take a liking to the individual, you might never find these people, their story, in the body of works that are produced by artists of my generation. And I did think that, uh, well, the appropriate thing to do is to begin to look for uh, credible people who have been consistent and invite them to sit for a live painting. You look at their track record in their chosen field, how they've been able to uh, contribute with their works or their deeds. Uh, to national development, not just to self-serving development. And we look at this track record, must have been consistent for a minimum of 30 to 40 years. That qualifies them. Yeah. Positive development. Now, what's unique about it is that you are going to experience them in the same space and record your experience using your own technique and style. Professor John Pepe Clark, popularly known as 
J.P. Clark is a renowned playwright and poet. When you talk about theatre in Nigeria, we have J.P. Clark, we have Shoinka, we have people like Ogunde, and you talk about poetry, we talk about J.P. Clark as well. These artists have the task of locating the intersection between fine art and literature. I was trying to be as um, light-hearted as possible, not too serious, so which would explain my um, almost uh, free flow of lines, sometimes in circles, sometimes in straight lines, you know, so the idea was just to have something casual, not too um, technical. Anyway, I was just trying to get the essence of the of the sitter, that is the person of J.P. Clark. Just try to get the essence, not just not, not necessarily capturing what people might say resemblance, but at the same time there is resemblance and also the essence of that is the essence, that is what you get at the moment. What I actually did is to go deeper in, into, into more actually than resemblance and capture the, the in depth, cap capture the emotion. And what actually caught my attention is, is eyeballs. That's, um, that's why I, I focus more in, in one of my work on, on the eyes. Professor J.P. Clark is 80 years old. Making him sit for about three hours for this exercise is artist's way of immortalizing him. The collection will be published as a coffee table book with all the literature and pictures, a compendium of all the drawings and the artists. Uh, the guest will be given a recognition, a plaque, uh, probably a drawing, and then the works will go into a museum of portrait. Eminent Nigerians came for this program. It's a means of celebrating and saying, ah, well done, we celebrate you. We want to be like you. Well done. The problems we have had in the past is the difficulties of identifying those real icons. Because we had problems identifying them, we kept on rewarding and honoring failures. And if we continue to honor and reward failures, we as a nation and as a people will continue to fail. So by what is being done by the Nigerian Society of Artists, bringing younger generation of artists to have before them an icon, a living icon like Professor J.P. Clark, work on his portrait. That is the message we stand for. This is the type of project that a lot of people should tap into, a lot of people should encourage. Because there are those who have not really been acknowledged, those who have worked tirelessly. And when we talk about working, they have served, they have impacted on so many lives. And how does the man of the moment feel about this honor? I'm very moved, I'm very touched. Humbled. Same time, I feel very honored to see all this while I'm alive. Usually, it's after you're gone, things are done, and you are not, uh, you don't know anyway. So that people's uh, experience. This one um, happened in direct. His supportive wife expresses her delight. I'm greatly honored as his wife that they did so because it's number five, which means that um, they take their time in selecting. And um, I was very happy that it's not your usual um, famous, famous politicians that they necessarily choose. Documenting Living Icon Project is the brainchild of Ulu Ajayi, an accomplished painter. Are you restricting this to only Nigerian icons? No, 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 it's international. It's international. We are looking at people like uh, Kofi Annan. We are looking at people like Barack Obama. This is a self-sponsored project. These stakeholders would like corporate bodies to partner with Document Living Icon Project.
Welcome back. And who says there are no room models? JP Clark is one to emulate and still talking about making impact. Mr. Nachi Uchebiam lived for a short time but left footprints in the sands of time. One year after his death, his family and friends converged on Lagos Presbyterian Church to reflect on the life of a man who meant the world to them. It's a leisure segment and I promise you, you learn something if you stay tuned. Mr. Nachi Uchebiam was murdered on the 14th of December 2012. It was a root shock to the family and to those who hold him in high esteem. The last weekend he came to Lagos, and um, it was on the, I think it was on Saturday evening or there about, yeah, Saturday evening. Um, my auntie, his wife, took um, one other of my aunties to the airport towards the evening. And then he was just, he was sleeping, then he came downstairs. He now asked for his meal, I like, gave him dinner, he asked for his wife. I told him she went to drop him one of my other aunties at the airport. So after having his meal, there's a special juice. He always likes pineapple juice. He now said, we'll see. Um, you know, there's this colored water people usually give me after eating. Please, can you just give it to me? So I know I went to bring the, he just took a little and he slept off there, you know. And then that's, that's Friday when um, one of my cousins called me, Gloria called me and said, ah, Uncle Nachi has been shot in Enugu. I was just all by myself in this house and uh, and I, I, it just stayed playing back, like, you know, the things he did last, last time I saw him, all the conversations we had. It's been a wrenching time, especially as all that's left are sweet memories of him. Nachi was very loving, Nachi was caring. Nachi was a man that will give even when he didn't have, just for the comfort of others. Nachi will give even when it wasn't convenient for him. Nachi have a, had a love for God. He had a love for his fellow man. He loved his family. He was a family man. Nachi was organized. He was a planner. The little resource that he had, he would make available to help in community development, to help with extended family, to help with friends. Nachi was interested in my own personal development. As I said, I married him when I was still very young. He guided me through my professional uh, career. Actually, before I even went for youth service, I started my ICAM program just under Nachi's tutelage. He allowed me to go to the best of schools, sponsored me to the best school, business school you have in Nigeria, Lagos Business School for my masters. He supported me, encouraged me in my career, he encouraged me in my work, he encouraged me all around. He allowed me to find expression. I had a love for God. It's, it's such a loss to us as a family. At the Lagos Presbyterian Cathedral, people from all walks of life gathered for Nachi's first memorial service. There were Bible readings, praises, and prayers. Reading from John chapter 16, verses 29 to 33, the minister in charge enjoined everyone to take solace in the fact that God is in control. We must discern and know what the Lord says in every situation. And when it happens, question no man, question no God. Look up to him because he is doing something. Late Mr. Nachi Chebian was a chartered accountant who worked in EcoBank Nigeria PLC as the regional head retail southeast. I have known him right from school in the very discipline. He was the deputy senior prefect in our school. And he took that discipline. He was a serious-minded person, very hard-working, very committed to assigned tasks, and I can say he was like a perfectionist. There were serious doubts as to what would happen to uh, the Williams family, what would happen to Bunde, what would happen to Nanachi's mother. These are very dearly beloved people to Nanachi. They were so close 
that you could not imagine how he will live the day after he has left. But here we are. The Lord God has kept us all alive. He was an usher and also served in other capacities in the local church. He is really a gentleman to the call. You will never see him at any point in time at all. He was very well with us in the district as a child of God. His 15 years marriage was blissful. I learned to persevere. I learned um, how to be a family woman through them because um, he loved his wife. Even at death, he still loved his wife. I learned a whole lot from Nachi. Nachi was a philanthropist whose earnest desire was for the youth of Umwana community in a Boeing state to excel in life. Nachi Ucheibiam lived for just 47 years but left footprints in the sands of time. No doubt he's been sorely missed. The family is asking concerned authorities to fish out his killers. They promise to carry on knowing that their beloved one is in heaven. Late Mr. Nachu Chebiam was a Christian and the family takes solace in the fact that he's in heaven and that they will see him again on the last day. Just 47? That was rather short. But it's not how long he live, but how well. So, live a good life. That's been our thing this week. My name is Chioma Okwara. By God's grace, art and leisure returns next week. Love yourself, love Nigeria. Merry Christmas.